Detroit Tigers spring training baseball is presented by Mary Grove awnings. It is a superb day for Major League Baseball. Again, not rubbing it in, but it is 72 degrees, which is basically what they have domes set at. This is like the perfect weather that you would choose. Six miles an hour out to left. Feels a little low for what the wind is right now, but that's what the uh, weather folks have said. And Kenta Maeda in search of some ground balls and some increased volume on the mound today, says A.J. Hinch. Well, we're also looking for Kenta Maeda to establish his fastball. Fastball command was an issue in his last outing, so they're looking for him to establish that pitch, pitch so he can get to his secondary pitches. That would be that split finger. That's his go-to pitch. That's the pitch that he's going to do tons of swings and misses and also induce some weak contact. Looking for him to build himself up as he aims and gets ready for opening day. A couple starts away from that for Kenta Maeda. Here is the Tigers starting defense brought to you by Glassman Automotive. Madris in left, Beerling and Badu left to right. McKinstry at third. Javi Baez back in there at short. We'll see Urshela at second. And then Canna for Torkelson over at first base after the travel to West Palm yesterday. Carson Kelly has the plates for Kenta Maeda. And it is a Kenta Maeda revenge game, by the way. Here's the Minnesota Twins batting order. His former teammates presented by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. You see Kirilov at the top, a left-handed bat, including two other lefties behind him. A prospect in Emmanuel Rodriguez. Matt Walner had a strong offensive season last year and all the way down to Prado, the second baseman for Rocco Baldelli. Kenta Maeda's former manager in season number six now, the former Tampa Bay Devil Ray against Kenta Maeda. And we hope that these Twins-Tigers games are going to have great significance in the regular season. Yeah, I believe they will. Again, they're the other team to beat in the Central. Tigers are optimistic. Obviously, talk you know, about the excitement around this team. But they've got to earn it. You know, there's part of that mindset that you got to get to 500. you got to play 500 baseball and then have the opportunity, hopefully, late in the season to where you're able to to make a push that's the hope certainly for AJ Hinch and for this team is to be involved at the end of the regular season and certainly we will see but uh, start in Chicago in just a couple of weeks as Kenta Maeda's first pitch is off and running here in Lakeland and so Maeda to Alex Kirilov who had the career high 11 home runs last year for Minnesota it was ball one from Maeda now two balls and no strikes as Roberto Ortiz has the plate today the crew chief is Mark Wagner he's over at first the UCF alum Adam Beck has second and then Laz Diaz your third base umpire this afternoon and two balls and a strike to Kirilov but yeah you mentioned it AJ Hinch talking about the fastball command for Kenta Maeda but you know for a guy who's 35 years old you don't really put too much stock in spring training in the first place yeah no I'm definitely not worried about Kenta Maeda he's a pros pro he knows how to get himself prepared and ready to go to battle each and every season he's been really good at it he's also had the, you know he's got that last year struggle a little bit early on coming off the of Tommy John but once he got healthy he was lights out you could have argued for a Cy Young for him back in 2020 with the Minnesota Twins in that shortened season and you see the splitter usage and how well he spots that thing down in the zone now on 3-1 you're probably not going to see a whole lot of that as that was a fairly good pitch to hit and Kirilov sprayed it foul well one of the things he does well with that splitty is he knows how to move it around the strike zone He's also been able to start it about belt high and allow the bottom to fall out. And that ball ends up around the knees. Doesn't really want to throw that pitch for a strike. 3 2, rip to right field, a base hit for Kirilov to open the ball game today. Yeah, let me see that. We're going to show you that. <laughs> Kenta Maeda here, fall behind in the count. There's a 3 2 pitch. And that slider there is just kind of spinning over the plate. Kirilov able to get the barrel to it. We have a special talk back button for you today. You know that? Yep. Yeah. That's where if you hit it, it still goes over the air. <laughs> here, here's Emmanuel Rodriguez, who is uh, 
young center fielder who is difficult to get to chase out of the strike zone. He had a 21% walk rate for his career in the minors walking into this season. You see the 863 OPS. And there you see Maeda doing good work to get the ball below the zone one and one. Well, that's when he's going to be at his best. When he can start that pitch right down there about mid-thigh. And again, that ball is just falling off a table. And he's going to get those, he's going to get tons of swings and misses with that pitch all season long. I was talking to Jake Rogers before the game, and I know Carson Kelly is behind the plate today, but talking to Jake about that splitter, he said, you know, with most splitters, guys aren't that consistent spotting it for a strike in the bottom of the zone. Strike to ball, yes, but strike to strike, to make that thing sit in the bottom of the strike zone is really a special talent for Kenta Maeda. A snap throw to first by Kelly is not in time for Kirilov. Well, I just believe a lot of guys don't trust that pitch up in the zone because if it, if it doesn't move and it doesn't have that good bite to it late in the strike zone, that's when it gets hit, and it gets hit hard. Two balls, two strikes from Maeda. That one, Rodriguez braces and takes. We told you about his patience, and Maeda... For that splitter last year, the opponent's slugging percentage of 263 is basically nothing. Nothing. And you look at the, I mean, the strike strike rate. His ability to command that pitch is really impressive. There goes Kirilov. Strike three. Kelly's got a chance, and it is waiting. Strike him out. Throw him out. Double play. And yeah, nice job there by Carson Kelly. Getting rid of that ball very quickly. Good footwork there. And a very accurate throw. Tigers have been paying close attention to the base runners. Kirloff gets a good jump, but the quick footwork there by Carson Kelly throwing a strike. Down to Javier Baez. And we know Javi and his ability to put a tag down. Some of the quickest hands in all of baseball might be the quickest tag in the game. Now Maeda working inside, two strikes on Walner. I would love to see a competition of the quickest tag, like a skills competition, yes. All-Star Weekend. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see guys throwing from the outfield, from right field, maybe to third base or to home plate. You liked a good outfield assist back in the day, didn't well, you? Well, there's nothing like it when guys are testing the arm. It's fouled away. When you look at stolen bases allowed, the Tigers, obviously, you all saw it last year. That was not a run game that was really full of potential against this team. Well, it had nothing to do with Jake Rogers and his ability to throw, and it had nothing to do with Carson Kelly and his ability to throw. It's all about the pitchers making sure that they keep those guys close enough and change their, their time and disrupt their rhythm where they don't get their best jumps. I, I do wonder, and I think most managers are wondering this year, how the league will react to a second season of the pitch timer as Maeda gets a ground ball to first and Canna will interrupt that conversation. More to come. We have a half innings left. we got time to talk about stuff. No score. Ego. Presented by Mary Grove Awnings. The Southeast Michigan four dealers and some of the regulars, as we mentioned, are in the lineup. Dueling at the top in McKinstry, batting second. Marcana in for Torkelson. Kerry Carpenter gets the DH spot to Dan all the way down to a field to do. In right field to face a 27-year-old high fastball wielding Joe Ryan. Well, Joe Ryan... Not an overpowering fastball. Surprising, though, he's got a really good spin rate on that fastball where he still continues to get swings and misses on pitches in the zone. It's incredible what he's able to do out there on the mound. Take a his numbers last year. Won 11 games. Very low walk rate, and he does. I mean, if you look at the heat map of his fastball, it is up in the zone. He is a rare commodity just in terms of living 
up there. A lot of guys like to travel up there to get strikeouts, but that's that's where he tends to reside. Well, I just feel like his fastball, when you're in that batter's ball, looks like it rise, it's rising to the hitter. It's rising into center field right now for Veerling, and he has a single to lead off the ball game. I thought maybe if it sat in shallow left center, he'd round and think about two. He'll take his single. Well, when you're facing a guy like Joe Ryan that lives at the top of the strike zone, you want to think barrel above the ball. Take a look at this swing here. Gets it off the end a little bit. But the fact that he's on plane, trying to keep those hands above that ball, and hits a soft line drive into, soft, into short center field. So one on, nobody out. And here is Zach McKinstry. He takes a heater for a strike to start. So we have Urshela here today at second base, McKinstry playing third, and that's still a position, third base, that is going to have some moving parts, it seems like, over the course of spring training and the season. I feel like you have a lot of versatility when you look at this roster. Guys playing multiple positions. Zach McKinstry, I believe, plays every position at an above average, above average defensive player. He can put him at third. You feel very comfortable putting him at shortstop as well. He throws bunt and pops it foul. I mean, you look at the position next to a guy's name in this camp, and it's going to include third base, you have to imagine. I mean, there are four guys above that line in terms of notable third basemen, guys with major league experience. Kennedy comes over off waivers. Jace Young has played over there. Kreidler can play anywhere. Kreidler can just flat out pick it. 2 is fouled off once again by McKinstry. So look, we are, what, about two weeks away? Two, two weeks, weeks as of Thursday from opening day, and a lot of decisions still to be made. A.J. Hinch made a series of cuts uh, earlier today before the team's workout. A uh, clubhouse that was notably thinned out earlier today. Well, right now, you, you want to start changing the mindset. You want st guys to start thinking more about open day, and you want that feel. Who's going to be in there? Uh, and there's a couple of more decisions that have to be made. But this is this time where you want to have the squad together. 0-2 tried to get inside, floated into right center field, and it will be Rodriguez on the charge to make the catch for out number one. It's important for guys to, I mean, they have been creating great relationships in this clubhouse. I mean, it's just nice when you start to thin that clubhouse out. And you know the guys that's going to go to battle with you. Even though the guys are getting sent down, doesn't mean they're not going to come up. But you start getting that your squad together where, okay, I can trust this guy. I know what he brings to the table. And you start to build that camaraderie. I would just say logistically as well, right? Like yeah. there's limited facility. You can't have a hundred guys doing all of their work. No, you, you can't. That's how you feel about this booth, I know. Like you've got your space, I've got my space. Well, I need you to stay in your space. <laughs> no, we can share the space together. It's very nice of you, Simo. It's very nice. Strike one to Mark Canna, who you can tell is... Uh, a, a very worthy addition to this camp. His personality is easygoing. He's the type of guy who, like, just shows up and does what he does. Yeah, he saw him out early today working at first base. He was, he, he was picking it over there. I don't know that he loved that strike. Yeah, the ball there might have been down a little bit. But he's a very patient hitter. He's going to trust his eyes. In my conversation with, with Kenna, he told me that he has no problems hitting with two strikes. Port first, and you can't do anything about that. Line out to Miranda is a double play. And A.J. Hinch will join us faster than he expected. Top two, A.J. will be with us right after this. Get an 11% rebate on everything. Rove awnings. No score, top two. Uh, A.J. Hinch joins us from downstairs. A.J., how's the weather out there? It's hot. <laughs> it's pretty warm. It's uh, 
The wind's not blowing as much as it was in South Florida yesterday, but um, it's nice to be back home after a long road trip to St. Lucie and West Palm. Um, nice, bright, sunny, hot. Good day for baseball. What What is it like around this time of spring training? Like, what are the personalities like? Well, I would tell you for 10 guys this morning, it wasn't great. Yeah. You know, we sent 10 guys down. Uh, so there's a little edge this time of camp. Guys are sore. You know, it's been the same old, same old for a few days. Um, you know, there are obviously veteran guys like Kenta knows what he's doing and has a target date of opening day, you know, to be ready. But uh, maybe a little more edge around. And then uh, so we bring in Miguel Cabrera and to lighten the mood a little bit. So it's been a uh, it's been a fun day. Speaking of Miguel Cabrera, there was a sighting. What, what, what are yeah. some of the duties? <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, he's got to get a watch, so he's at our coach's meeting on time uh, this morning. He he reports to Harris and Greenberg, so he doesn't probably have to listen to me as much as he used to. But, um, man, it was nice to see him. He's laughing, carrying on, sitting in the coach's room. He he looked at Alan Trammell and said, I finally feel old. And he's now <laughs> in the coach's room. So, um, you know, he's going to be around our club, hang out with our guys. He'll, he'll spend some time with the minor leaguers. Um He'll be in the cage early tomorrow morning with with uh, our hitting group and um, and just be an extension of, of what his career's been. So it'll be fun to have him. Um, he gets to pick and choose a little bit of his timeline, but um, he's always welcome on the bench. He's sitting um, on the bench and 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 weighing in when he can. Let me ask you: This is a very serious question. Very important. Is he in the best shape of his life? <laughs> he's in great shape. He's in he's in the best mood of his life for sure. He's like retired life. He's he's spending time with his kids and and uh, and now he gets to come out kind of at will. Now I'm gonna be interesting to see. Check back in the sixth inning. He's used to leaving spring training <laughs> about the fifth. So we'll uh, we'll see if he makes it nine innings. Oh, so he's got to stick around, is what you're telling us. So he can. Do, he's Miguel Cabrera. He can do whatever he wants. But. Um, It'll, you know, Tram's not leaving, so if he's going to follow in Tram's <laughs> footsteps in the special assistant category, then uh, he'll grind it out. What most interests you in watching the body language of Jackson Job later? Um, you know, I can't wait to have him pitch and, and reward him with an inning. He put a ton of work in um, this spring. We told him the first day, hey, kid, you're not making this team and you're not even going to pitch uh, before you get sent out. Um, so I'm just looking for, I mean, we like strikes. At the end of the day, like, he'll impress us. If he just stays composed and, and throws strikes, he he wants to dominate. He doesn't want to uh, to just go and come and throw an inning or two. He's going to want to, you know, get his swing and miss. He's going to want to get his first pitch strike. So um, he's faced a couple of our guys in the backfield. So that, that part won't get him. But the competition might get to him a little bit. But he'll, he'll get after it. Well, you know a guy has some really good stuff when you have your peers telling him <laughs> that he was nasty when they oh, yeah. face him on the backfield. So that speaks volume to what our audience will get a chance to yeah. see. Do you believe? Yeah, I do. I think it'll be. I mean, it'll be huge for him, and and everybody's excited. I mean, he's a good kid. He listened. Um, he learned a lot. Um, you know, obviously the the you know his time is coming. It's not right now, but um, it will be good to get him on the field, get the, get the juices flowing a little bit. We had him. You know, he wasn't sure if he was going to pitch in a in a spring training game or that prospect game that's coming up this weekend, but. It's nice to get him in in-game action. Uh, what were you like in your first ever big league spring trip? Totally composed. Um, <laughs> totally under control. I was I was lockered in between uh, Jason Giambi and Mark McGuire. So oh. I was uh, some big boys that, I mean, Jason hadn't quite won the MVP yet. Uh-oh. Uh, little pickoff for you. That was catching. That's something that you guys have been working on this yeah. Spring. You know, one thing that's interesting from from 22 to 23, we became a really hard team to run on. Uh, that's because our pitchers put a ton of work in control the running game. Our catchers, both our guys can really throw. You saw Carson here. We know what Jake Rogers can do. Um, you know, but it's it's nice when our pitchers pay attention because 90 feet matters. So we preach it. It sure is nice when it when it uh, comes into the game. There's strike three. Were you watching the telecast? We showed like a half inning ago how difficult this team was to run on. There you go. See, you guys are smart. Look at you referring to the <laughs> graphics from the manager's spot. A.J. Hinge, thank you very much. Imagine yourself. Calling everybody from the 313. Get ready to enjoy April and May Tigers games with no fees. Valid for 24 hours tomorrow only, March the 13th. 
For tickets, go to tigers.com slash 313 sale. Restrictions apply tomorrow. Do it. No fees. No fees. That always sounds good, right? It does. It's Kerry Carpenter attacked at the top of the zone, and that's an interesting strength on strength here, isn't it? It really is because he does major damage at the top of the strike zone. He's one of the few guys in the big leagues that I believe that can get on plane with that ball at the, at the top of the strike zone. There's a heat map coming for you. Oh, I, I just love this ability here. When you talk about slugging, a guy that can drive the ball the opposite way with that ball at the top of the zone. And you can see there, even on the inside part of the plate, he can get to it. And, and then Joe Ryan's not going to go away from there. Oh, no, that's Joe Ryan's strength, so he's got to continue to attack here. But I think that plays right into what Kerry Carpenter wants to do. Speaking of damage and being able to do damage, let's take a look at some of the swings. I do want young hitters to focus on the eyes, focus on where his eyes are. But look how he climbs the ladder and how flat that bat is at the top of the zone How he and how he stays through that ball. That, for me, is going to be a big difference maker in this season for him where you're talking about 18 to 20 home runs. He continues to drive that pitch out of the ballpark. He could reach that 30 mark. Now, that's put a lot of pressure on him, but he has done it in the minor leagues. Oh, yes. Yeah, certainly. And good to see him healthy. I mean, we haven't had much of a look at him in spring training here on our telecast. Is that ball fast off the bag, over the bag, down the right field line. And Carpenter is on his way into second base and maybe three. Here's the throw. Not in time. It is a triple for Kerry Carpenter. Yeah, you just love watching this young man in the batter's box. He's made some mechanical adjustments. He, he stays back. He lifts that front leg. He sits back on that backside. And when that pitcher lets go of the baseball, he is ready to attack. Right now, he's thinking, yes, 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 and yes. And he continues that swing there on a the pitch down and in, pulling the hands inside and drilling that ball down the right field line. And this is just an easy triple here for Kerry Carpenter. Just rounding the pillows here. So Javi Baez shows up with a runner at third and nobody out, and he gets a breaking ball to start from Ryan. Contact would be Baez's friend here with the infield bat. Yeah, there's an RBI waiting to happen, and a big swing and a miss on a breaking ball from Ryan. One ball, one strike. But one of the things that Baez is going to try to do and he's, gonna, he's been trying this and working this all spring training. He's trying to get his rhythm and timing, a better rhythm and timing off of the pitcher. Said that he feels late. And that's what's causing him to swing at pitches out of the strike zone. So when you see Joe Ryan pick his front leg up, and when he, start, when he separates his hand, Javi is trying to get himself to separate as well, meaning that he wants to get his hands back and his front foot down so he can make better swing decisions. He does make contact here and lifts it to right center field. Walner's got a great arm out there in right, one of the best in baseball, and it's not in time. He loaded up. Carpenter beat him, and it's 1-0 Tigers. Good throw there by Walner, but that's a great slide there by Kerry Carpenter. Sliding a little bit past home plate and being able to reach the hand in there. But Joe Ryan missed with a breaking ball here. He missed. He left that ball up. And that's where Baez, again, he can capitalize off that pitch up in the strike zone. The one he has trouble with is down. But how about the slide there by Kerry Carpenter? Recognizing that he has to get back. Gets back, tags up. Good slide. Good situational hitting there by Javier Baez. Yeah, Walner. Walner can cut you down at the plate. He's got a really good arm. But take a look at the slide here. Got a little hook slide there. Gets past the catcher. Puts the hand down. I tell you this, Jake, not a lot of guys can, can take that slide or make that decision to be able to slide. Why is that? It's, it's athleticism. It's, you know, it's something that you have to work on. It's just like hitting. It's just like feeling the ball. I was one of those guys, by the way. You were? Yeah. Right back to Ryan. Popped in the air to second base. And a bare hand shot for Prado is no dice. So... Gio Urshela on at first. A hard hit baseball off of Ryan. 
So the Tigers have a runner on. Nice to see Arcel is starting to find that rhythm, starting to find his timing. And you can see there he gets down, that ball's out over the plate. He didn't try to pull it. He was taught to hit it right back where it comes from, and that's exactly what he does here. So they'll take a look at Ryan. The one thing we know about Joe Ryan is that he is a pretty tough guy. He grew up playing, and, and you wouldn't expect it when you hear the sport, how tough it is, but he grew up playing water polo. And the stuff that happens in water polo, <laughs> in terms of like the battle and the tangling and underwater, like you got to be tough. That's a skill to play water polo. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I, I've never played water polo, so I don't know. You're laughing at me. No, I, I tell am, you what. I don't know if you're. Joking. You know what? You know what? <laughs> Next week, while we're doing the telecast, you can tread water for three hours. Okay. Oh. And then see how tired you get. Oh, I'm definitely gonna be exhausted. That's what I'm saying. Okay. You got to be a little tough. You gotta but then, like. There's there's a lot of contact too. There can be. Really? It's a physical sport. I'll watch the game. You don't think I'm serious. No, I don't think I love this. I don't think you're serious. No, it's it's, it's tough to tread water for, for a couple hours. I do believe now I do believe that's tough. This conversation has been treading water for at least a couple <laughs> of minutes. Just ball one to Madrid. From the state of California, he was part of that Olympic team back in 2021 in Tokyo that won the silver medal. <laughs> Ball and a strike. I feel like at some point this year, when the Tigers play the Twins, we're going to be airing water polo footage we, we just to show you, you, you what to. it's like. Now, I, I told you, I get the tread in water, but contact. There's a lot of contact. There can be. Okay. Well, when you're, you know, when you're scrambling for the ball, when it's a loose ball, not that I've played, right? Well, I don't no, look the part. You're, you're no, I know. I feel like you've played before. I've watched it. Okay. I've watched it. Yeah. But, but, but when there's a loose ball, you got to go after it. And you got to battle for it. Okay. Okay. Well, I know. I'm going to get there. I know you played such a contact sport in baseball. You know, big <laughs> contact sport. Is there's a strike called that? Uh, I don't know that the crowd. Well, I play calls. a little football. That's a, that's more contact. Basketball. There's a little more contact. What position did you play in football? I was a receiver. Yeah. So, got hit hard going across the middle. You know? Did you go across the middle? Is the question. In the air, third base side, foul territory, and it's going to get out of play. I, you were a slot receiver. Is that what you're talking? No, definitely not slot. I, we, back then, we didn't have slot. No, you just ran go routes. No, I ran How many times did you go over the middle? I mean, a couple times. A couple times. Yeah, I ran those you know, slants. Yeah, they were playing zone coverage. There was nobody. Maybe, maybe playing zone and I beat the zone, you know? Seriously, how many times did you get hit over the middle? Maybe about four or five times. Okay. Not enough. I know, I know. Enough to where I didn't want to play football. <laughs> <laughs> enough to where I didn't want to play anymore. You're like, man, standing out in this grass in the sun sounds pretty nice, huh? Pretty nice. Doctor. There was one time I got hit so hard. Yeah. This is a Friday night, you know, Texas football. Sure. Good fastball for Brian. Up the next morning, and I literally could not move my neck. It, it, is that right? Oh, my. It was enough for me. I was like, all right, no more football. Let's just stick to basketball and baseball. I was going to say, and that's the day you bought your first set of golf clubs. Yes. And, now, <laughs> and then I'm having trouble doing that as well. So. Is that right? You yeah. you struggling this summer? Struggle. This spring here? I struggle. There's Carson Kelly. Two out. Urshela at first. And then a first pitch fastball for a strike. I mean, you see what Ryan does. He really does live off the fastball, with the exception of the Javi Baez trip to the plate. Yeah, he just left that pitch up to Baez. And again, Baez was able to capitalize. But when he's at his best, he is. He's going to get some swings and misses at the top of the zone. And, and, it, and that fastball is so enticing. He gets guys to chase that pitch out of the zone. He also uses that splitter as well, a pitch that is certainly feeling a comeback around definitely this Tigers clubhouse, but also Major League Baseball. There, there's been a lot of dispelling of that whole splitters cause elbow injuries deal. Yeah, and, and it's nice to see, too, Matt Manny adding that to his repertoire. Goes to third, and Severino finishes off the second inning. Sack fly for Javi Baez. Dan Petrie will join us from the Mary Grove All. After that. It's KFC's new...
Kenta Maeda on the hill today. He is the third Tigers player who was born in Japan, including an opening day starter back in the year 2000. Hideo Nomo, 24 years ago, was the opening day starter for the Tigers. Obviously, rookie of the year with the Dodgers and such a fantastic career with them. And then Masao Kida as well. But Maeda on a growing list of Japanese-born Tigers pitchers. And if you haven't seen, it is worth watching just to get to know what Kenta Maeda came through. There's a documentary, I think it's an ESPN 30 for 30, about the high school baseball tournament in Japan. It's called uh, Koshin. And Otani has played in it, uh, you know, in terms of recent names. But all the big names that have come through Japan aspire to win that tournament. And Kent has been quoted a couple of times before about just the memories of that tournament and how seriously everybody takes it. It's basically your local town, your prefecture, sends a team to this tournament. And if you win the big tournament, you're basically a celebrity for life yeah, in Japan. And that's special. And I just feel like you, you have that culture even created when you talk about the Latin coaches when they play in the WBC, how, how much pride, you know, they have Dan, for their country. Dan Petrie is down at the Mary Grove awning. Uh, Dan, how you doing today? You good? Doing just fine, you know. I, I'm always going to enjoy watching Kenta Maeda pitch. And on top of that, just uh, Jackson Job making his, uh, you know, major league debut, so to speak, in a spring training game. So that's going to be a lot of fun, too. Well, speaking of splitters, we've been talking about it, but look at that nasty splitter there from Kenta Maeda. And it's all set up by that fastball. You know, he just continues to, you know, work in building up his endurance. It looks like maybe that fastball's ticked up just a little bit, which you'd like to see him do, you know, uh, as he gets a little more closer to opening day. A couple of them right at 90, you know, a little over 90 miles an hour, so that's a good sign. Was that his first slow curveball today? I believe it was. That one came in 74. He didn't throw that thing a whole lot last year at 4%. Dan, what do you think of the fastball command so far? Well, Today. that's definitely one of the things that they want to see him do, you know, work on that fastball command because he's got all those secondary pitches that he throws off of. You guys were talking about that splitter down in the zone and just like that one. Yep. It's all set up off of that good fastball, but he's got to throw that for a strike down in that level, down in that strike zone. But, Simo, how about a comfortable 0 for 4? Is this Kenta Maeda? You know, you step in the box and you're saying, man, I feel good. Next thing you know, you're 0 for 4. Well, the only reason you feel good is because you can't, you don't feel like he can overpower you. You don't have to deal with 95 to 100 mile power fastball, so you're comfortable. But you're right. It's an uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable if you ask me when you're going split finger, slider, change ups down in the strike zone, and you get these uncomfortable swings there where you're way out in front, or way out on that front foot. It just makes for a miserable day. Yeah, you know, and you're seeing you're seeing velocity all the time, you know, all through the year, all through spring training, and all of a sudden now you've got, you know, 88, 89 on the fastball, maybe a 90, and then that good split finger. That's got it's, it's just got to be a big adjustment. Yeah, it's hard to stay back. I will say, too, just watch that last strikeout. It seems like some of his splitters have more horizontal than others. It, it, it does look that way. And, and I gotta, I want to dive a little bit deeper into the numbers because I really haven't dove into those numbers particularly. All I, I mean, what I've been able to judge is the uncomfortable swings. We'll get some numbers in here to see is that, if that's true, if that's true or not. You, you, you know, also, I, I, he's one. This is why it makes, for me, so fun to watch because I really think he makes up pitches as he goes. I think you're right, Dan. He'll read a swing, you know, and he'll say, you know what, if I can make this go a little bit to the right, I got him. If I can take a little bit off, I got him. If I can make it go a little bit to the left, I got him, you know, and, and he's just, he'll freeze people with that, that fastball at 88 at the bottom of the zone just because he can read them. So he just, he gets very creative as the game goes on. Well, he just threw a front hit breaking ball that nearly swept over the plate for strike three. Now he comes back inside and gets a pop foul. Then you rarely see pitchers that throws a split finger have the ability to make it move down and away and down and in. Is, is that finger pressure points? Yes. So how does that yes. work for a pitcher? Yeah, you know, and, and it depends upon where you put your thumb also. Some of them have the thumb underneath or on the side. 
But yeah, that's all about, you know, just putting more pressure on your index finger can make it go to your arm side. Maybe putting a little bit more on your uh, middle finger can make it go act more like a slider down and away from go glove side to a right-handed hitter. 3-2, swing and a miss, strike three. He went fastball, he missed, he gets him slower, and he strikes out the side here in the third, Kenta Maeda. Saturday giveaways at Comerica Park are back. The first 15,000 fans in attendance can walk away with exclusive Tigers giveaways every Saturday. Don't miss the Tigers hockey jersey presented by Comerica Bank coming up April the 6th. It's the Tigers and the A's. And for tickets, go to tigers.com slash giveaways. Joe Ryan facing Akil Badu on a first pitch fastball for strike one to Akil to playing uh, right field today. Some left field, obviously, in the past, and he'll play right this afternoon. And he's another guy that we've seen pretty extensively in the big leagues that is another example of how much more difficult this club is to make this year. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on Akil Badu this season, given that there's a crowded outfield, several left-handed hitting outfielders, Parker Meadows, Riley Green, Kerry Carpenter. So it's going to be tough for him to uh, to crack this lineup. But the one thing you can control as a player is how you perform. And you want to make decisions tough for A.J. Hinch and Scott Harris. And you want to be in the conversation when there's a need if you don't make the team right out of spring training as well. And that's that's been a lot of the conversation around here. Yeah, and I think A.J. Hinch and also Scott Harris has made it very clear uh, to the players that are getting, being sent down that you go out and you perform you you can find yourself here at the big league level Joe Ryan a high fastball for strike three AJ will mark it down on his lineup card as we will at home and one away and for those younger players that are going getting sent down that should be encouraging you hear the president of baseball operation tell you hey you go perform force our hand that motivates me. That would motivate me to be able to, to go down, clear my mind, and just go play some baseball and hopefully make my way to the big leagues. Veerling a bunt, third base side. He stung it pretty good, and Severino's got a shot at this thing. There are two away. I like the thought here. Matt Veerling at the top of the line. Oh, he line up, he runs well, being creative. Now, he butted this one a little bit too hard. You want to try to deaden this ball, but he does a good job of catching it out in front. But that's a nice bare hand play there by Severino and made it look fairly easy. But I like the thought process there. If he could have just deaden that ball just a little bit more. So how do you do that? How do you deaden it a little more? Well, what, how, what, there's a couple of ways you can do it. If you try to catch that ball off the end of the bat, you know, you think about guys swinging when they swing and they hit the ball off the end of the bat. It can you show us with a pen here? <laughs> if we come into the booth, can you show us with, like, a smaller implement? All I need is a bat. Well, Just, all you got is a pen. That's all I So we're going to have to use it. <laughs> all right. Show us bunting with a small writing utensil. Right, so if you can get in front of it, right? You see this part of the bat? This is, let's just pretend this is the bat. So yeah. you want to catch that ball in deadness. So you want to kind of catch it with the bat, and that's going to deaden it. Or we hit against with the label. If you turn it with the label, yeah. then you're able to just deaden it by hitting it even in the middle part of that, of the sweet spot of that bat, where you just, you just kind of deaden it a little bit. You challenged me there, Tim. No, that makes sense, though. I like you reenacting baseball with really small instruments. <laughs> that's great. So well, now when you show pitch grips, you got to use a golf ball. All right. Strike three. Simo <laughs> and his miniature bat will be back in the fourth. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Now 
Marvelous day for baseball here in Lakeland, Florida. We are so glad to have you along. Dan Petrie is downstairs. Craig Monroe, Jason Benetti, our entire crew here on Valley Sports Detroit or wherever you may be on MLB TV. Love when people just jump in because it's daytime and they want to watch a game and just say hi to uh, to us on the telecast. This is a beautiful game. It is. This is what, is what better place to be if you're down here in Florida? Why not go catch a ball game? Lay out on the burn, work on my tan. You know, there's so many things that can. That, that Are you suggesting I need to work on my no, no, tan, no, no, Simo? Because no, no. that's pretty obvious. I've been working on mine. I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, it's good. It's good luck. <laughs> Dan, how, how are you doing down there under the awning? Are you getting enough sun? I know the awning is strong. Yes. No, I, hey, I'm in the shade. I, I mean, it's beautiful, you know, and it, I don't need to warm up and go out in the sun at all. It's just really comfortable and, and watching a, a, a good ball game so far. And Kenta Maeda has pitched very well. He has five strikeouts, including four in a row. Uh, Dan, in terms of, like, last start to this start, we've done the telecast for both of them. Simo, you were on radio for that last one. Dan, what do you see in terms of an improvement so far today? Well, I think he's being a lot more efficient. I think he was at, what, 54 pitches um, after three innings the other night. And this gives him an opportunity to go into that fourth inning because he hasn't just threw his 50th pitch there. So that's uh, that's encouraging. And the other thing is just that the up-downs, too, you know, where he goes, this is, you know, you, you get through the inning, you go sit down. You come back out, you go sit down. Now he's on his fourth, which simulates more of what he's going to be like in a regular season. Well, then I've just been impressed with his ability to move his split finger up, down and in, down and away, and then the one that just again falls off the table straight down i really want to dive into how does he how is he able to do that and how effective can he be and how much can he control can he control the strike zone with that kind of movement ooh, 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 ooh. And that bitch was mm. and you can see kent's maeda's reaction there he wanted that call so look at the location here it's a good frame job there by carson kelly and you can see him pull that ball up and present it well. It's a home plate umpire Ortiz, but didn't get the call. It's called ball four. Kirilov is over at first, and there's a strike to Rodriguez. You know, we've heard a lot, guys, about the Tigers wanting to command the strike zone. And the Twins have a number of guys in this starting lineup who are similar types of guys. We saw it with Julian last year, right? The amount of pitches he takes. Rodriguez, we talked about it, the walk rate for his career is over 20%. Prado in the nine spot is well known for his on-base percentage. Martin in the seven position, a young outfielder, doesn't chase very much. So it seems like there's a little bit of overlap in the way the Twins are building guys for the majors and what the Tigers are trying to do with the strike zone. Well, if you can control the strike zone, if you can control it on both sides of the ball, you put yourself in the best position. Uh, to get the most out of your team and out of your talent. Dan, who was the guy that you faced that you were like, will you just swing at a pitch? <laughs> will you just, like, swing? Because I'm tired of walking you. Absolutely. How about Ricky Henderson? Oh, that's a good you know, one there. And, and that's a guy that, you know, you lead off and you just say, you know, just and, and, and nothing because he had to hit out of that crouch. And then you just groove one to him because you want to throw a strike and it's in the upper deck, you know, because of how much power he has. Which the finger looked like right there. It did look like it up in the zone, too. Our Menards big money encounter is that splitters. Oh, we're oh. talking splitters, and we're talking about a nasty one here from Kenta Maeda. There's a split finger there where the bottom just falls out. There's one there gets to a right hander where it just down, darts down and away. But how about the way he throws it to the left hander? It comes out. That's almost like change up reaction where that ball just shoots down and away from the left hander. He's going to get tons of swings and misses. Looking forward to watching him navigate through lineups uh, in a Tigers uniform. But that, yeah, that one that he's getting that, that goes down and away from the left-handed hitter, you know, it depends. It that one right there, right, Dan? On his thumb, you know, if he can put more pressure on that thumb and index finger, it'll get that kind of movement that goes down and away. And then if he puts his thumb more underneath the ball, okay, and comes straight over the top, it'll go straight down. So a left-handed hitter thinks that that 
that split finger is going to go down and away, and I think it catches him a little bit by surprise, and he does this on purpose. He says, okay, now he's looking for it to run into, my, into his barrel, and I'm just going to come right over the top with it and get it to go straight down, and I think that catches him by surprise. So he's always tinkering with the movement just by what he's doing with that index finger and thumb. Yeah, that's an art in itself right there. And the fastball is good enough elevated in the zone for strike three. But Simo, from the hitter's perspective, with what Dan's talking about here, how do you recognize that? Like, out of the hand, can you see on those splitters, can you see spin? No, you definitely, you can see spin. And it, but coming out of his hand, he has, it's like two seam spin. So it looks like a fastball to the hitter. And so when you see that spin, that ball spinning this way, for me, that's two seamer. And you're, you're, you're timing 90 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get to 90, and then all of a sudden I recognize spin, but then that ball is coming in at about 84, 85, and it's going to get me out on my front foot. See, every time we're in the batter's box, we're, we're reading spin, and that split finger, because he holds it like this, it's spinning this way, yeah. the same as a two-seam fastball. So as a hitter, I'm reading fastball, and then all of a sudden you'll see guys with that front the, the upper body kind of leans over because they're way out in front because of the speed differential. Does it help you at all to know that he only throws a four and he doesn't throw a two generally? Well, that would help. If I knew for a fact that he only threw a four-seam fastball, now right out of his hand, I'm going to know that that's a splitter. Now, I'm going to try and stay back, but because of the effectiveness of the pitch and his ability to move it down and away, down and in, and then straight down, that would be the challenge for any hitter in that batter's box. Problem is, he does throw a two-seamer as Veerling goes back on it to make the catch. I was just suggesting if they, you know, but guess what? He makes it really hard on you. That's the whole point. One nothing is good. Tiger single game tickets are on sale now. Don't miss the Dodgers, Yankee, and the world champions Rangers this season at Comerica Park. To get your seat, visit tigers.com slash tickets. And don't forget to download the MLB Ballpark app to access your ticket and exclusive content. You know, you know something? Yeah, what happened? This is America. If you're too good at a job, people are going to hire you for it. And you just fell into that trap in a big way. Lawless. Lawless. It's just fun. I'm having fun up here with Jason, you know? Dan, thank Taking you for that. Off of you. No, I, I, you can tell I'm very tense. Yeah. So much pressure. Well, I mean, I, I got yelled at last, last game because I, I didn't do a read, you know? So now the pressure's on me. When did you get yelled at? Well, what? Remember, you, remember you, you had that big one. It was like three paragraphs. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're talking about that's, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, no, that was your fault. <laughs> Strike three, one down. Canna on three pitches against Joe Ryan. He's got really good stuff. He, he really does. He's got some elite stuff. And, again, it's not overpowering. But he really understands how to pitch. He's got solid pitch ability, meaning that he knows his, where his bread is buttered. He knows that that fastball at the top of the strike zone and then the split finger off that fastball up, it's just going to be tough for hitters to cover both. One down for Kerry Carpenter. I, I was talking very briefly to him in the clubhouse, and I said, is it possible that the most boring job in the world is spring training DH? <laughs> it's got to be. And he said, I, as long as I don't make the final out of an inning, because then I feel like I have to wait 45 minutes to do anything. So this is a perfect spot for him. One out fourth inning and then go to the he said he does like to talk to the guys from the minor league side make him feel comfortable make him feel at home and there is great value in that for Kerry Carpenter I mean you guys both know Dan Simo he is as welcoming as kind of a guy as you're going to run into in Major League Baseball he, he really is he, he's one of the guys that you, you you gravitate towards he's got this infectious smile 
Of course, we had one look at him there. It's the first time he hasn't smiled in like five weeks as he's getting ready for the pitch. There's strike three, two down, and now a message from the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. The Ford Mustang Mach-E SUV is available at your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. AZ Plan lessees can lease one for $4.89 a month with zero cash due at signing. Dan Petrie downstairs, Craig Monroe, Jason Benetti, thanks for joining us for Tigers Baseball this afternoon, wherever you might be. And that there, Dan, was the first ball Joe Ryan has thrown all inning. And that's what you were talking about. He's got that real low walk rate. And that's, uh, you talk about it. I mean, it's no secret. It's not that, you know, the Tigers are just, you know, coming up and saying, hey, we got to control the strike zone. Every other team does it, or at least attempts to do it. It's just the Tigers want to do it better than anybody else. There's that sweeper, that breaking ball that starts at your front hip. And you got ugly face right now, Simo, yeah, because you know what that's like. Yeah, because that's the one that you give up on. The one that feels like it's going to hit you. And it's the tough one to keep that front shoulder closed. And what you, do, you tend to pull off and your front hips open up a little bit too soon. That's why it's such an effective pitch. And then he dots him with a slider away there. A little bit more sharper slider there. And now I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to elevate that fastball. 2-2. Two -two. Here's a breaking ball away. 3-2. and two. Well, Simo, if he throws a 3-2, and two, is he going to throw it? Or if he throws a 2-2, two -two, is he going to throw a 3-2? and two? I believe he will. I do, too. Swing and a miss. Strike three. There it was. Slider, sweeper, strike three. Both pitchers have struck out the side of this game. What's bigger than a... Tigers Baseball Valley Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be. Come to Comerica. And by Wolfside Windows. Half off every window, plus 20% off or five years, no interest. Kenta Maeda is done. 65 pitches, 36 strikes. And time now for a wall side windows pitching change. We say hello to Alex Fiedo. Alex Fiedo's having a really good spring training. He's been throwing some good fastballs at the top of the zone, 94 to 96 miles per hour. It's two seamer, been running down and away. Slider has it's always going to be his go-to pitch. It is sharp with late break. He's fighting for one of those spots in the bullpen. And AJ did, are trying to, he's one of those guys where you can stretch him out because he has starter stuff. But the way he's looked coming out of the pen, is just entices you to maybe want him to be that couple inning guy out of the pen this season because he's got electric stuff. He's also got that new change-up grip, Dan. He does. And, you know, I was talking to him about that grip and just to try to take, you know, alleviate some of that pressure on his middle finger where he had that problem with the nail, had to have the surgery on it. And... I'm not sure <laughs> um, how it actually helps, but it does. Oh, check swing in decision for strike three, and Fiedo punches out Severino. Dan, speaking of changeups, she's at 83 miles per hour here. Good speed differential between the fastball and this changeup here. But he's holding that pitch like a splitty. And you can see there where that ball there is 10 miles per hour different than his fastball with some late break to it it's it's a little bit like a, a circle change you know where it's it's almost like a two seam grip and then he spikes the middle finger and that's what i mean about it. i'm not sure how that alleviates the pressure but it does and he and Tarek scoobal were messing with it and just started throwing it and it just felt so comfortable for him and it worked it's got good movement and it also alleviates the biggest thing is that pressure on his fingernail because he was having problems with all of his pitches on that fingernail oh, 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 oh. the stuff is electric right now for fiedo and yeah looking at Statcast, 
they called that punch out pitch a slider. It looked like it kind of cut in there, and that's the pitch that he's always going to have. But but there was kind of like a demon ball character. Like watching that out of his hand, it did not look like your average slider shape. Yeah, it wasn't. A, it didn't have the slider. I didn't see the slider grip there. Oh man, that's the slider. It, yeah, that's this is filthy from Fiedo. Yeah, th this is a this is Fiedo. This is the best Fiedo we've seen here where he can overpower you with his fastball at the top of the zone. And then this nasty slider here that just never gets to the plate, starts it on that outer half, and it just allows the movement to break off. I think the one, the next step for Fajardo, for me, is going to be pitching aggressively inside, then to the right-handed hitters. Yeah, I, I just think that right now, as confident as he is, that whatever anybody wants him to do if that's what they want him to do saying hey you got to come inside more i mean he's to the point now where he's just out there firing strikes you know the stuff is good when you have to ask what was that <laughs> right and he gets a ground ball to short from martin it's a one two three inning he says check me i'm, I'm all good this break brought to you by marygrove awnings life outside visit marygrove.com for your awning Spring training baseball is presented by Mary Grove Awnings. And now time to go under the awning with Scott Harris, courtesy of Mary Grove Awnings. And we're talking about how he feels going into a season, what he feels he kind of owes a fan base. I feel a tremendous responsibility in this job. I feel um, the weight of generations of Tigers fans. Um, who desperately want to see a winner. They want to come to Comerica Park, um, and they want to root for something they believe in and are energized by and are proud of. Um, that keeps me focused on doing the best job I, I possibly can. That helps me block out a lot of the bias and noise that could impair decision-making. Um, but it's hard. It's, it's really hard. I, I think that overwhelming sense of responsibility uh, generally guides me in the right direction. That's a guy that grew up a big time baseball fan and has seen some certainly incremental improvement over the course of one season. The home run number much bigger last year. That helps. And the Tigers leading one nothing in this game. Cole Sands is the new pitcher and a first pitch swing from Gio Urshela gets him a fly out. To Walner, uh, what do you make of what Scott said there, Simo? And just the knowing him as your wall side windows pitching change for Sands, knowing him, what do you hear from Scott there? Well, one of the things that I love that he's done already is taking the pressure off the players. Uh, but you know, when you go out and you sign Cole Key, the second baseman, a guy that hasn't pay, played in the big leagues, and you give him a deal to where he can focus, solely focus on going out and playing the game. You start, I started talking about this team with the potential, right, of making the playoffs. Well, we have to pump our brakes here because when you listen to Scott talk about how they have to earn that, you know, you have to earn that right. Well, that in itself is just alleviating unnecessary pressure. Now, do the team believe that they're, gonna, they're a solid team and they have the ability to do that? Yes. But we got to you know, kind of slow down on those conversations because you want these players to be clear mind and focus on the task at hand. And this is playing day you know worry about winning the day and i think that's what i when i when i see those gains it just tells me that it's slow but they're gains and that's what we have to be optimistic and and, and, and be proud that the fact that he is developing these guys to where when they do get to the big leagues they're going to be impactful players well i also just think from say this day 365 days ago you look at what's in camp and i was watching from a distance so i don't know it as well as you and dan do but this is again a deeper roster but it's also a more experienced roster in the guys that you expect to be stars yes and you guys like spencer torkels and a healthy riley green uh, you, you're expecting those guys now that the big fellow miguel cabrera is out you, these are the these are the guys that are going to lead, and they and these guys do an excellent job of leading by example. You're going to also see guys like Kerry Carpenter, you know, lead the way from an offensive standpoint. Are going to be one of the better productive hitters in this Tigers lineup. 
You know, I just think, too, that A.J. and Scott Harris make a really, really good team. A.J., nothing gets by him, and everything that he does, he does with a purpose. He has something in mind. Like, he, he names Tarek Skubal the opening day starter on March 1st because he says, you know what, we play games in March. So it's yeah. in that mindset of the players already. Scott Harris has such a great plan in place as far as, hey, I'm not going to block any of my young guys that are down in the minor leagues. You know, we've got, we feel like we've got a good farm system. We've got some guys that we feel like are right on the cusp. And, and we don't want to sign, go out and sign big name free agents for a number of years and block their path to the major leagues. No, there is a distinct intentionality about everybody you mentioned. Oh boy, look out over there at first base. Well, I love how you talked about when you talked about the DH spot. You know, you. And there's guys out there. I'll, I'll name J.D. Martinez because, again, 33 home runs, 107 RBIs. And everybody said, well, why don't you go out and sign J.D. Martinez? Well, they have a plan. And that plan is they want to have give the guys a chance to stay healthy used by using the D.A. spot, getting guys like Riley Green off his feet, getting Torkelson off his feet, all the while keeping their backs in the lineup. I personally like that plan that in the process of what what we're seeing with, with this new regime here with with scott harris being the president of baseball operations again that dan said it they are on the same page and you can you can tell that it's trickled down into the clubhouse because those guys are pulling the same pulling the same way as well we had a one pitch fly out a one pitch pop out and a nine pitch strikeout they're swinging they're aggressive some people are let it eat <laughs> Save big money with these hot deals. Side windows gives us a look at the Tigers television schedule this spring and coming up a week from today It'll be night side baseball again against the Philadelphia Phillies because of Valley Sports North and their generosity It'll be the twins and the Tigers coming up on the 20th and then Dan Dickerson will be in here for the game with the Mets on the 21st First pitch lane ground ball to second everybody's double park today and Goodrum is the first out of the inning. I don't know if you all saw this. It popped up on social media. Uh, our friends in the Mets booth, just speaking of the final television game, uh, Keith Hernandez is doing the game either earlier today or yesterday with Steve Gelbs, who was filling in for Gary Cohen. I love the guys over at SNY. Great people. And Keith Hernandez looked down at the at the monitor, and he said, well, when I, there, are there numbers on the front of the jersey? And Steve goes, Keith, they've been there forever. And Keith was like, no, 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 that, not when I played. And, of course, they have footage of Keith Hernandez with numbers on his jersey. <laughs> I mean, so, Keith, Keith, it's, Keith was just like, he's never seen it before in his entire life. It's so funny how somebody can be so locked in on the game. He's so good at it. But he's never seen a jersey number on the front of, front of his jersey. I mean, that's kind of baffling. <laughs> it's awesome. It's, it, it is awesome. <laughs> Tell you where his focus is. It's on the play, It's on the field. Yeah, I watched it like three times. <laughs> I've got to say, it was just breathtaking. Oh, my. Hey, uh, Dan, how about our last telecast? Five days ago, we were talking about Joey Votto not signing. And then he signed with the team the Tigers were playing. It, and isn't that a great story, too? One, that he's going to play again. Yeah guys that you like to see play but then it's safe at first they're going to say canna came off the bag so on the throw from mckinstry it's going to end up being a base runner in prado sorry dan oh, that's okay no and then and then just him going really back home yeah. this throw ends up look like he just comes right over the top and just uh ooh. And this is, uh, yeah, Mark Canna's, I think, first base on, or first time at Yeah, it's his first too. time at first base. So this just getting used to where to position yourself, put your foot on the bag. But, no, just having Joey Votto going back home, you know, he grew up in uh, in a suburb of Toronto. So to have an opportunity to go back and, and, and 
you know, get the most hits as a Canadian-born player, I mean, that would be uh, that would be really good for Joey Votto. Well, I think just the game needs him. He's just got a great personality. It's good for the game. This is an interesting spot here as we watch Fiedo scuffle a little bit to 2-0. and oh, He was going so smoothly, right? And then this is going to happen. Something like this will happen in the regular season. And now it's about reconfiguring and recalibrating to see if he can get himself an out or two. Yeah, the spring has gone so well for Alex Fiedo that he hasn't pitched under much duress whatsoever. And that's what A.J. will talk about that. You know, being that, well, it was a good thing that he pitched with some runners on base and showed that he can get out of it, you know, where you can make adjustments or, you know, it's not always going to go just according to plan. So it'd be interesting to get, have him get out of it. Towards center field, and this is playable for Veerling out there to make the catch for route number two. You saw Bo Brisky getting loose in the bullpen, so it might be Jackson Job to close. Ooh, wouldn't that be something? I mean, A.J., AJ does understand drama, but he also understands testing people. And I'm sure if it is going to be that late in the game, he has a very distinct reason to do it. It's just not exactly what we necessarily expected today, which is interesting. Yeah, he always keeps us on, his, on our toes. Right up the middle for the final out. So, one base runner, no harm done. one nothing your score. So it's one nothing Tigers. Jackson Job has yet to pitch today if you're tuning in for that. And uh, last time we were on the air, we debuted a new game okay. where we quiz the analyst on your career, right? And we called it because it's what you might say if you agree to play the game. We called it What Have I Done? Which is what we're going to play with you now. And we're going to quiz you about your own career. Sounds and, good. Are you ready to go? Uh, I'm, I'm ready. Okay. We, we gave Petrie and Pena multiple choices. Carlos needed multiple choices and still got it wrong. Dan knew without any multiple choices. So you mentioned outfield assists earlier today in the telecast, right? Okay. September 12, 2006 against Texas. Career best, three outfield assists. Who did you throw out and at which bases? Uh, I threw out ooh, Ian Kinsler. Ian Kinsler is correct. Uh, at home plate. At home plate. And That's I one of them. I threw out Carlos. Carlos Lee. Yes. Twice. Yes. And I believe it was at home plate. Home plate once. And what was second base? And second base. That is unbelievable. We have them. I can't believe you just did that. Come on, Carlos. Why are you running on him if he already threw you out at second? And then Kinsler. This one is better, man. It's Kinsler for crying. I mean, he's got speed. Carlos Glee, you're thinking he's not He's not the fastest. A big guy. He's pretty big. Big guy. He's probably carrying a piano on his back. But How did you know all those? Because well, that was a, it was a highlight. That was an awesome day to be able to throw out three guys in the same game. That was I can't forget that. Yo, that was 18 years ago. <laughs> Strike three called. <laughs> I, I'm floored. Like, I'm floored. Okay. All right. Let's let's go even further. Right, okay. Same game. You made an out that came from a Texas outfield assist. Who threw you out? Who threw me out? Uh huh. Oh. We couldn't have just left that's, it at you know everything, right? We, a, we have to be greedy. Who threw me out? I don't know. That one, I don't know. You got me. Okay. I'll, I'll take a guess. Frank Calinato. It's Nelson Cruz. Nelson Cruz. We got double off. It was Sean Casey lined out to right field, and you're like, I don't I know. I was what greedy. He didn't do? read it off the bat. <laughs> just trying to get a good job. You know, see, it happens. That's why it's hard to get on these things. Like, listen, I, I, get back. It's a line drive out. Yeah. Trouble me off, in and over. I'm still floored. 
that you knew all three. Dan Petrie, can you believe he knew all three bases and players? I, it, that is impressive. I just like the hey, flush the the getting doubled off. Forget about that one. That's a great point. You know, That's and, what I should do. I'm going to flush it yeah. then. If you if you are going to allow me to flush it then, then I'm going to flush that one and we're going to focus well, on. Well, that's why you didn't remember. Well, that's exactly right. Yeah, he forgot about it, right, Dan? Exactly. If anybody wants to know what the definition of repression is, it's what what Simo just did. You know, and, but Simo always talks about that, too. He'll tell you, you know, I don't know what he did offensively that game, but he'll say, you know, sometimes, sometimes I, I don't affect the game offensively, and, but I can still have an impact, and I can do it defensively, and obviously that game he did. Pretty clearly, my goodness, as Severino is under it. So, all right, we'll, we'll go for a third one. What, there's another one? In that uh -oh. same game, who hit, I'm just going to ask you one part of it, who hit the game-winning walk-off home run of the ninth? Where? When was it? It was uh, September 12, 2006 against the Rangers. 2006, walk-off home run against the Rangers. I know who. I believe this wholeheartedly. Carlos Guillen. That is exactly right. That's well done. Do you know who hit the homer in the seventh? Nope. It, but you do know it's Carlos I know. <laughs> on the walk-off. Dude, that's awesome. I do know it was Carlos. Well, because it just seemed like that year, though, one of us up there was going to to come up big for our team at the bottom. It was like you could pick a guy. It, if it was Maglio or it was Carlos Guillen, it was Brandon Ann, Marcus Tim, myself. Like, that was a magical season where we just felt like whoever was up there when the game's on the line, they were going to get it done. Well, it was Marcus who hit the home run in the seventh. It was Marcus. So you're on to something. Uh, That's amazing. And then the funny thing, funny story about Marcus Tim and I, I guess we look similar. <laughs> Our moms would get us confused. What? My mom would call me and go, oh, I saw your hit. Come run. Great joint. I'm like, mom, that wasn't me. That was <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm <laughs> serious. It happened. Baseball on Valley Sports Detroit is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Find current offers at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by Fiber Law. All we do is a win. A trip around Central Florida today under partly cloudy skies and a great ball game to this point. One to nothing on a Javi Baez sacrifice fly, and so many folks are here. Met uh, a gentleman from Battle Creek earlier today, a guy who had me sign, uh, another gentleman had me sign a poster that he has had signed by as many Tigers announcers as you could imagine. So he's got Ernie Harwell's signature, he's got George Kell's signature, I mean, he's got anybody you could dream up. And I was like, man, that is awesome. It's joining the list of greats. Yeah, I, I mean, one of these on things is not like the other. No, you are At on this that point, list. very Sesame Street. Uh, Bo Brisky is in. Our wall side windows pitching change has Brisky in after strong work from Maeda and Fiedo. Yeah, I think coming into the season, going into the season, I believe the, the strength of this team is going to be their pitching. And Bo Brisky, another one of those arms out of the pen that's been very effective. He started throwing a two-seed fastball last year. He's been able to you know, carry that over into spring training. He's been effective pitch down and away to the left-handers. Induced a lot of weak contact from right-handed hitters because he's living in their kitchen, meaning that he's getting in on the hands, breaking tons of bats. And to go along with it, an improved slider change-up mix. Well, as you saw, Fiedo still throwing in the bullpen. Just get a little extra work in. How about Brisky going 2-0 with a fastball running inside, and he's willing to have that be off the plate to, to break a bat or two? Well, I just like that he has the confidence to throw that pitch. Yeah. And when you have the movement, that late movement in the strike zone, even when you fall behind the count, you can start that ball in a third and when allow the movement to run in. You're going to get an aggressive hitter, especially younger hitters, trying to be a little bit too aggressive, and that's when you can take advantage of that aggressiveness with that two-seamer. What do you think here, 3-2? 
Three, two, I'm going fastball, two seam fastball down the way. Yep, pretty much. It was a little more elevated than he wanted, I would say. Yeah, but if he can get that ball there down around the knees, it's good location. But again, you talk about how far that ball is away from the hitter's eyes. That's what makes it such an effective pitch. How about this change? I was going to say, would you go change up here? Okay. You know? I mean, just kind of trying to think along with Brisky here. A little harder than your average. A little bit, a little bit harder. So you're going fastball, four seam, four seamer. All of those are four seamer. They didn't go to the changeup. It's a slider that he continues to work on. And he's trying to add this in, and this, and he's starting to shape the way, shape up the way he wants it to. So he's been taking his, you know, down here in spring training, he's been working on that pitch, trying to get the you know, spin and the location, the better feel of that pitch. He had that third pitch, man, to go along with a two-seam changeup. Left-handers have a tough time getting to that ball when you can start it over the middle and run it in under their hands. There's a broken bat for you to third base. Yeah, that's if anybody needs any firewood. Jam! <laughs> and that's what makes him so effective is that he can. He can use both sides of the plate, and I like the way he's reading hitters. He knows that Walden's trying to let that ball get deep, and what do you do? You get in in his kitchen. You get in on the hands, and you can give that start fire, right? Gets in on the hands, breaks the bat. Oh, I check that. I know how to watch people on TV start a fire. Yeah? Yeah. I've never started one on my own. No, I haven't either. You. Then why'd you ask me? Well, because I figured you were more of an outdoorsman than me. Dan Petrie. <laughs> Quick thing. Somebody just turned to me and said, I figure you're a more of an outdoorsman than I am. Oh, That's like the bottom of the barrel of outdoorsmen. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't give yourself more credit. I figured you'd like to sit around the campfire so you would start to some fire. I look like I've been sitting indoors for five consecutive years. <laughs> you are, you're hard on yourself. He is, huh, Dan? He, he's not afraid to, you know, just uh, call himself out. But, uh, well, that's because you're so busy. You know, oh, wow. if you'd stay down here, you, you'd, uh, you'd definitely get that tan going. You are a little pale so. up here, though. A little? The more I, the more you, I look over there at you, I said, maybe you do need to get out of the sun a little bit off I am the color of a hospital light bulb. <laughs> I, it is, I am translucent at this point. And this guy said, I look like more of an outdoorsman I mean, than anybody. Yeah, this is, that's pretty, pretty I don't weird. think we need to compare and contrast anything. No, 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 I think we should. I, I mean, I have like a glow. Stuff. I'm just, I'm like got it. ghastly. I mean, you've got a little sun. No. I don't know if we want to go up. Where, I, 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 no, 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 no. Leave that down. Not for public consumption. <laughs> <laughs> Dermatologists love you, though. They, they do. No, that's right. Yeah. I am I am perfect to run up the bill. <laughs> wow. Is that happening on TV? Did we just... I, I, that was... We aired that? We did. It's um, happening. That's good. It's all happening here on Tiger Spring Training Baseball. I can't believe we're a couple weeks away from opening day. I can't even. It's going to be fun. Just ready, yeah. You, you, you're ready to go. I think the players, talking to a lot of those guys, they're ready to go. It's that time of spring, too, where you're just like, okay, I can't Ooh. get this season going. Ooh. Ooh. That high. It's been a couple oh. of chances that Tigers haven't got the call. Let's see what Brisky throws here. Yeah, you it's want it, but it's not going to be a strike. On the ground, second base to the backhand side. Little double clutch. So smooth. And that is the end of the road. Urshela and the Tigers finish off. A one, two, three inning for Brisky in the sun. <laughs>
Now Fielder swings, and there's a fly ball deep left. Might be Hamilton going back. He leaps, and it is long gone. A home run for Fielder. The great Ernie Harwell, you heard his voice there. It was March 12, 1960. This day, all the way back in 60, Ernie Harwell did play-by-play -play for the Tigers for the very first time at a game against the Washington Senators in spring training over at Henley Field, now the home of Florida Southern. Ernie Harwell eventually replaced uh, Van Patrick, paired with George Kell, and just reading about Ernie in the offseason and getting to know him a little bit through the documentation of his life it was so heartening to me to read about everybody's confidence in him as a genuine human as that ball's hit well to left field and pretty deep Martin is back at the track he's gonna watch it bounce over the wall onto the berm and Mark Canna has himself a leadoff double well, Mark Hanna's been working on his timing, working on his rhythm. He started out spring training, letting that ball get a little bit too deep. So now you can see he's starting to push that ball a little bit more out in front. Catches this ball out in front, right down the left field line, and gets himself a double. Starting to, starting to find that rhythm and that good timing that he's had throughout his career that's allowed him to be an on-base machine, but also a very productive hitter. Sorry to ruin that guy's day that's sitting on the uh, towel as we go under the awning with Dan Petrie, courtesy of Mary Grove Awnings. Alex Fiedo with you, Dan? Well, he is, and uh, another fantastic outing for you, Alex, and uh, it's been that way all spring, and I just think that the confidence level, the way you're throwing is off the charts. Has that got something to do with the way you've had so much success this spring? Yeah, I feel like I'm always a pretty confident pitcher. I think that um, had a really good offseason this year, and I came in um, healthy and uh, not rehabbing through the offseason. I think um, I'm I'm uh, benefiting from that, having a good offseason, and I think this stuff has ticked up a little bit because of it. Yeah, exactly. It looked like that fastball has ticked up. But I was looking at stats the other day. I think you've, in this spring, zero walks, 12 strikeouts. You talk about controlling the strike zone. That's about as good as you can get. Yeah. Uh, try not to jinx it. Just want to keep challenging hitters. Uh, I would say uh, I, don't, I don't feel like people really grew up trying to pitch. They wanted to be ball players hitting, and it's hard to hit. So... Those guys know that if you if you throw a lot of strikes and challenge them, it's tough. It's tough to put the ball in the play and get hit. So I'm trying to do my best to challenge these guys. And but having stuff like that too, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, it's one thing throwing strikes, but you got to make quality pitches, and you've been doing that all spring. You know, we talked about your change up, a little different grip, but I didn't. I don't think you threw one today. You just stood with the fastball and slider. Yeah, we just stayed a fastball slider today. Um, I think the fastball had a good, uh, some good life on it, so I think uh, Carson wanted to stick with that. Um, went down to the pen and threw some, an extra like 10 pitches, so we used to uh, try to throw some more uh, changeups over there. And is that a pitch that you're not afraid to throw that right on right? You'll throw that to anybody, right-handed, left-handed hitters, or is it kind of reserved maybe for a little bit more of the left-handers? I know, I really want to throw it to righties. I thought last year we started mixing it into righties like the third time through when I was starting games, and I thought I had a lot of success. Uh, and doing that so that was a point of emphasis going into this offseason that I really wanted to be confident in being able to throw that to lefties right is in any count because it's a valuable pitch and, and also just you've always been a starter you're comfortable maybe get that bullpen uh, roll and uh, right out of the, the jump here and, uh, and go north with the team I sure hope so um I think I think I just want to know myself as a ball player. I just want to be able to pitch when the team asks me to pitch and do my best to give us a chance to win. Well, just keep doing it because whatever you're doing, it is work. And so continue good uh, success, and hopefully I'll see you up in a couple weeks. Thank you very much. Back yeah. to you guys. Alex Fiedo, just another great outing from him, and uh, he'll uh, definitely be uh, make that decision really tough on uh, A.J. Hinch. Uh, certainly. I mean, I, I love that he went out there and didn't throw a changeup today. Good question, Dan. Yeah, but how about us as baseball players, Dan? So superstitious, right? It's like, yeah, I don't want to jinx it. it. <laughs> I, my bad, yeah. Sitting there, but I don't want to jinx it. Yeah, yeah you don't want to jinx it. Yeah, it certainly wouldn't want to jinx it. Boy, this game is cruising. one nothing. In our world, it's go.
Here's our Comerica Bank game summary. Hey, you talk about bullpen spots. Here are two guys that are fighting for those spots. Alex Fiedo and Bo Brisky. All they did today was put up zeros, attacking the strike zone. It was Fiedo first, and now you get a chance to see Brisky, what he was able to do. The 97-mile-per-hour two-seam fastball induces some weak contact. We saw some real nice change-ups and slider mixes. Both of these guys have to continue to pitch well because one of them will be heading north with the Tigers. It is a very difficult competition in the bullpen. It's fun. It's really fun. It's fun. That's what you want. You want competition. It brings out the best in everybody. And if everybody's better, it's tougher to make the team. Toledo will be deeper as there's ball one from Brisky. And we go under the awning with Kerry Carpenter and Dan Petrie, courtesy of Mary Grove Awnings. Dan? Yeah, Kerry's the difference in the uh, the ball game so far with that triple and then scoring on Javi Baez, a sacrifice fly. But uh, got off to a little slow start with the left hamstring. I'm assuming that that's no longer an issue, you know. So getting, uh, getting used to everything. Everything is starting to come around? Yeah. No, it's, uh, everything's getting better. The timing is getting better at the plate. Um, it's nice to be in these games and kind of get the juices flowing a little bit. So it's been nice the last week. And it's kind of nice. I know you, you had a big smile on your face playing right field, you know, but how, how hard is it to, to be a DH? Um, I don't think it's too hard. I, I love to hit, so I'm kind of locked in the whole game anyways. But uh, I do like to be out in right field, kind of like staying loose and, and uh, being out there. Like, feel like, yeah, I feel like you're more in the game and, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, AJ, it seemed like gave you more leash last year and let you start facing a lot more left-handed hitters. You had about 70 at-bats. Are you getting more comfortable and think that you can play against either hand? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, And even the more at-bats I get, the more comfortable I get. And, uh, like, I did it in the minor leagues. And it's a little bit of a, a different animal up here. But um, just having the at-bats and getting comfortable off of it, I, I, I know I can hold my own against them. So it's that's a goal of mine. You, you know, we talked about this last year. You had six stolen bases, you know. There's a little bit of speed in there. So what what do we expect in stolen base wise out of you? Uh, more than six. So yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I got six in like the span of a couple weeks late in the season. I got the steel sign a good amount out there. So I think more than six. And, and okay, 20 home runs. I think there's more in there, and and you do too, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't hit a homer for the last like over a month last year so uh yeah i think there, there's definitely more in the tank there and, and is that just maybe like your full, first full season in, in in the in you know the the big leagues kind of thing where did you get tired or was there anything that uh, caused that um that power not drought but not not to hit a home run uh no i wasn't tired i literally just felt like i was battling timing issues for for a while and couldn't really figure it out for a long stretch of time i had some balls off the wall it was uh the, the power was still there it just didn't happen for a month so yeah and, and that's something that they always talk about too is is and i think you've talked about it being early you like to get that foot up get it down early and be ready to to swing you can catch up to that fastball but it's just a matter of i'm going to see that fastball and adjust to the breaking ball and that's and everybody says well i'm just because Kerry does it doesn't mean that i can do it but that certainly works for you is that kind of what you try to do when you're up there get that foot up in the air get it down early and then just look for whatever pitch in your zone exactly yeah so i i just look for to be on time with the the fastball usually try to time up the fastest fastball that guy has and uh and go off of that and and usually i can hold it for off speed some guys make good pitches but uh yeah during the season when it's going right i feel good yep well you know what just stay healthy no more of those issues and you and uh spencer torques them back to back that's uh, that's a nightmare for any pitcher so best of luck gary i appreciate that there's Kerry carpenter and difference in the ball game so uh back to you guys Dan, thank you very much. Thanks to Kerry as well, as that's going to be inside and ball four to Martin. It's a one-out walk. When we sat down early in spring training, I asked Kerry Carpenter, when did you become nice? <laughs> because he's like the nicest guy in America, and he said, after I got my braces off in 10th grade, I started to get compliments on my smile, and I figured, well, if it works, there you go. Yeah, who says that last, nice guys finish last? That's not true. No. But he did say something that is music to my ears. What's that? Getting there early, timing up fastballs, and adjusting to the breaking ball. Mm -hmm. That's hitting right there. And I think so many times we see guys that are maybe in between, looking for all speed, then they take the fastball down the middle. 
I just think it's so, so much better for a hitter if you can go, if you can look for the fastball, time up that fastball, and then be able to adjust to the all speed. Well, speaking of timing, uh, he and his new bride uh, went from engaged to married in a month and a half. Really? So it was the first pitch swing of engagements. <laughs> he was the first to take the swing. He went, yeah, just first pitch fastball. Right down the middle. Right down the miss. middle. Boom. Don't miss. Home run. He yeah. hit a homer with his new bride. Very cool. That is cool. It's it awesome. Engagements all over this clubhouse if you've just joined us. How many guys got engaged? Twelve? It's a lot. It was in the it was in the ten range. I think twelve is the official number. It's the number. Yeah. What's there not to love about love? Oh. <laughs> Man. You came for baseball and then got life advice from SEMO. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Big, big hugs for everybody. That was a verbal hug. <laughs> I feel good about everything going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> two and two to Goodrum, the former Tiger. On the ground up the middle, and they will get the out over at first base. No chance for a double play. Uh, if you tuned in... To learn about love, you got exactly what you wanted. <laughs> if you tuned in to see Jackson Job pitch, uh, you will likely, it looks like, see him in the ninth inning. It looks like Job is getting ready, getting a little dirt, rubbing it up. I'm excited. Excited about watching this young man. It's a lot of buzz. I bet he's excited too I know right he's, now. He's got to be excited. Yeah. His first game, spring training this year. Big league spring training, going up against big league hitters. I mean, we saw it last year coming back from that lumbar issue. The stuff, obviously. I oh, mean, obviously. The stuff is elite. It's a change up to both righties and lefty. It's a mid to upper 90s fastball and a slider that just seems to be unhittable. Some yes. people call it a slur. He says it's a slider. And he also he can command the strike zone. And he throws all of those pitches whenever he wants. And any count. That, for me, is, is, is developing and, and being... That's elite stuff. When a guy is that young, 21 years old, and can, can really do all of those things that makes you a top-of-the-rotation kind of pitcher. He got noticed even before he had his slider because he was a former shortstop turned pitcher and he just started throwing the fastball in the mid 90s and people were like, wait, who? Yeah. What is this? And then he grows to become the number three prospect in the Tigers organization, number three pick in the draft. And we will see him coming up in the ninth inning and a swing and a miss. Brisky. Continues the shutout, Maeda, Fiedo, and Brisky. Nice. Just nasty. Jackson Joel for the ninth. The D5K and do so before the registration price increases tomorrow night. Prices go up after midnight tomorrow. So visit runsignup.com slash Iran the D to secure your spot for the best 5K in Detroit. One nothing score. This is pitch clock gem so far. Just as Big B at the plate, he is impressed with his power. So far this spring training. And here is Jordan Balazovic, the Canadian born right hander on the mound for Minnesota. Talking about the power of Big B here. Just love watching him take his at bats. The ball just jumps off his bat. Ground ball to second and one away. Here in the eighth inning, Big B in the spot that was. By Madris early in the ball game. Anthony Bamboom will bat in the spot previously occupied by Kelly. So Bamboom 
will be the one it looks like to catch Jackson Job in the top of the ninth inning. As we expect, he is up and loosening in the bullpen. Dan, what are you what are you looking for? What are you excited about with Jackson Job? Controlling his uh, controlling his emotions. I mean, you're in a one nothing game. You know, you're going out to get the save, and you know it's also your first spring training game. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going through his mind, through his stomach, and I'm sure Juan Nieves is out there, and Juan's really good at that. You know, kind of making him relax, saying some things just to, you know, just calm him down and just you know, hey, you got the stuff. Just go out and do what you do. What do you think? he's going to feel based on your experience i know it's different for everybody it is a spring training game but you're also kind of performing for your teammates aren't you and and you've got the the biggest thing is you've got guys behind you there's people around you he's surrounded by people that he's been with a little bit you know so there's a little bit of a comfort level you know hopefully he's thrown to uh, ben boom a little bit you know that uh, you know he's going to feel comfortable there but I mean, the warm-up pitch is taking the mound. You're going to be, you're going to have butterflies until that very first pitch. That first pitch gets out of the out of the way, then you start to settle in. But you know, I mean, it's it's only you know what is he? 21 years old. I mean, you're going to be you're going to be amped up a little bit. So it's just controlling those emotions, and uh, I'm sure he's waited a long time. And this is a reward, as AJ Hinch said, for all the hard work that he's put in this spring. And. The moment is just sort of waiting and sitting there, right? It's just been building, yeah, and building. But when you, when you when you talk to this young man, he is a confident young man. So I anticipate him coming in and and really being what he's been in those 16 in, in the third innings in the minor leagues with those 64 strikeouts. Here's a guy that's saying, "I've got good stuff. I know I'm just 21, but I've got elite stuff, and I trust it." You know, he's got elite stuff, and, and, and really he got signed because of that, you know, fastball, that mid-90s fastball. Plus, he was young. They figured there was more there. That wipeout slider, that's what you hear him talk. But he's now become a pitcher, adding those other pitches, that change-up that just looks tremendous, but also a cutter. So those two pitches will get you signed, but do those pitches get you to the big leagues? Not necessarily. So he's had to develop some other stuff, so we'll see how he uses all of his pitches. You know, the fun part about baseball is you, everybody has to do it for the first time at some point. And in a spring training game, that's one thing. In the majors, it is different. This is 7,131 here today. So it's a bit of a different story. It's just pop foul third base side, and it will get into the seats. It doesn't matter how many people are here. He knows that this is another step. Like... Were you nervous, Simo, for your first game in AAA? Uh, I was. I was nervous. I think. You, I think the nerves brings out the best in you. So I always enjoyed being. I mean, I I embraced being nervous because I felt like that means I. You obviously you genuinely care. You want to be, and then you just want to be at your best. So it depends on how you use it, and I think he'll use it in his favor today. We're about to find out. Yes, we are. Jackson, Joe, your turn, kid. Little Caesar slices and sticks is the... And it is a hard slider as well. Then he turns to 101 oh to get to 02. Oh He's having a little fun now. How about that fastball at 101 at the top of the zone? By you. Tough to catch up to that one. <laughs> I'd love it. Yeah. O2. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, did he dot him? He might have dotted him. 102. 102. Just stop it. This is a slider for you. Two balls, two strikes. He he had a .13 ERA in high school. And I asked him earlier this spring, I said, who scored on you? Like, how do you remember? And he said, well, I strung a couple together, but we won the game. Tells you where, what, what, what it's all about. Winning the game. But he did say, yeah, he wasn't real happy about it. He was uh, pretty upset when the ERA went from zero 
the uh, third overall pick in the 2021 draft. His father, Brant, outstanding PGA Tour golfer in his own right. And A.J. Hinch just watching the theater. Oh, man. Buzzsaw 101, two down. I mean, that's just unhittable stuff. To be able to climb the ladder, change the eye level, and just down in the strike zone at the knees at 101. Take a look at this pitch here and the location. Yeah, you're not going to hit that. You just don't hit that no. one. Especially when you've got everything else to back it up, there's no chance. Yeah, this is... Uh... And he'll cut it a little bit, too, right, Dan? Can he cut that fastball? I mean, that one looked like it had that little dart. He does throw that cutter. Yeah, that looked like the cutter. And that is filthy. That's just not right. <laughs> I mean, he goes from throwing his highest pitch, velocity-wise, was 102. And then, oh, I'm going to jump Uncle Charlie. That's the changeup. It's Buck Bunny-ish. At 86, 85. Wow. Jackson Job just obliterated the Twins in the ninth inning for a save to remember. Oh, doctor. Oh, my. Well, the crowd is starting to go, and they're clapping. You think he's going to throw 102 miles an hour fastball? No. He pulls the string, takes advantage of the adrenaline on the hitter. He's got 101, 102, but he, he's showing right there that he's got a great idea on how to pitch, and it's more than just a fastball. Really good first outing from Jackson Gill. Tiger fans in their text threads are sending the vomit emoji and the head explode emoji. That is silly stuff. It, it, it really was. That we're, was. We're gonna still have the chills when we come back to wrap it up. That's